Welcome to yet another TED Talk. Talking every day. I don't, even, I don't know what TED Talk stands for. Today we are talking about the biggest drama creator for each personality type, the inferior cognitive function, and how to improve it. Now, if you need an intro to cognitive functions and what they are, click the, the <laughs> click the card above my head, yo. The inferior function is the part of our personality that is most underutilized. You could say that we suppress it. And so the lack of energy and time that we put into our inferior function ends up steadily creating fear in our lives. It's kind of like a messy closet you know you should really clean, but every time you do your laundry, you just like throw the clothes in there and try to get the door shut and just forget about it. But it's always there in the back of your mind creating all this anxiety. So this is why it's so important to bring our awareness to our inferior function and try to improve our use of it. Now, a few introverts out there, have you ever called someone and then they picked up the phone and you were like, oh man, I hoped you wouldn't answer. Well, if you can read, you can see that that is what's printed right here. But if you want to support the channel and get a cool, unique tea that no one else out there has, except for other FJ viewers, head over to infj.me slash store. Pick up one for yourself, for your friend, for your mama. The EJs or extroverted judges will always have trouble identifying their own personal judgments. ESFJs and ENFJs have extroverted feeling or FE as their dominant function and introverted thinking or TI as their inferior function. So this means too much what will make everyone else happy, not enough, what do I actually want to do? So the FE dominants tend to struggle with accepting that they need their own way of solving problems or making things work because their instinct is to not rely on their own TI, but to rely on others to do it for them. So this leads to them avoiding challenges out of a fear that they can't surmount them by themselves. So the way to improve this situation is to deliberately choose a belief system and more importantly, understand understand your reasons for those beliefs. What do you really think is true and why? Be able to articulate it and stand on those reasons. By developing what makes sense to you personally, you can let go of the anxiety of not feeling smart enough, which is something that all the types that prefer FE deal with. They feel like they're not smart enough or feeling up to the challenge of solving complex problems. ESTJs and ENTJs have extroverted thinking, TE as their dominant function and introverted feeling, FI as their inferior function. So this means they overemphasize working and solving problems in the outer extroverted world and underemphasize forming the conclusions of what they personally value and feel. So the TE dominants struggle with accepting that they are influenced by their own emotions and values because their instinct is to insist that only what makes sense and solves problems is relevant. So a lot of times you'll hear these types be like, well, yes, I feel this way. Like they will be aware of their emotions, but they'll be like, uh, no, that's stupid. <laughs> not gonna deal with that. I'm not gonna be influenced by that. We're gonna go with how do we get some results. So this leads them to reject healthy emotional narratives out of fear of irrationality. And it's funny because all the feelers are like, well, yes, of course emotions are irrational, but you still should make decisions with them. So the way to improve this situation is to deliberately think about your values. What do you prioritize? By developing and choosing what matters to you most, you can let go of the fear of not knowing why emotions surge up in you because you've determined what is governing you. That's why it's tough for the types that prefer these extroverted functions because they're, they're aware of their internal compass, but then it's like, ah, I can't do that. I gotta go with the outside world. Okay, so the EPs or the extroverted 
perceivers will always struggle with limiting their options in some way. ESFPs and ESTPs have extroverted sensing, SE, as their dominant function, and introverted intuition, NI, as their inferior function. So this means they overemphasize gathering experiences and details and facts in the outer world and under underemphasize forming conclusions about all those things that can categorize those experiences. The SE dominants struggle with accepting that they are influenced by information that is abstract or unprovable because their instinct is to insist that the only information they that, <laughs> that they have gathered and the things that they can prove and cite have influenced them. This leads to them rejecting healthy self-narratives that are abstract out of fear of those influences. And a very simple way of putting that is they are scared of answering the question why when it comes to their life. The way to improve this situation is to consider and choose a narrative and or a philosophy to guide you forward by developing and choosing your own abstract story of your life and what it's all about, all the experiences you've had. How do you connect it all? You can let go of the anxiety of not knowing why things happen because you have an answer that you can carry with you as an explanation. And it's funny because as we'll see, the NI types, the opposite, they know why it's happening, they just don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, the ENFPs and ENTPs have extroverted intuition in E as their dominant function and introverted sensing as their inferior function. So this means that they overemphasize, overemphasize <laughs> over gathering concepts and ideas in, in the outer world, making all these crazy connections and dreaming up a bunch of possibilities. Meanwhile, underemphasizing basic routines that will you know constrain the time that they take doing all this daydreaming because their instinct is to eternally try to evade and avoid the limits this leads to them rejecting healthy grounded routines you'll hear these types say a lot of times i just hate routine routine is boring i don't want to do the same thing all the time to improve this situation what you got to do is choose routines and limitations to guide you forward you know don't freak out because it's not like these are being imposed on you you are choosing them you are taking on this this routine this limitation you choose your own limitation <laughs> how about that so by doing that, by choosing your own controlled routine, your schedule, you can let go of the anxiety of not knowing how things will happen, how things in the real world will unfold because you are creating the answer for yourself. It's really weird because they're thinking about abstractly what are all the possibilities of what could happen in the future, but then they're getting tripped up by that, like the things that happen all the time routinely because they don't wanna have to pay attention to it. Okay, next we're gonna be looking at the IJ types, they really struggle with shaking things up. This is very tough for these types. So how do they make the situation better? Okay, so the ISFJs and ISTJs, they're the opposite of the types we just talked about. They have introverted sensing SI as their dominant function and extroverted intuition NE as their inferior function. So they're doing the opposite of what those other types did that we just talked about. They are overemphasizing forming routine experiences and rituals for their inner world and underemphasizing exploring new possibilities and reimagining their experiences. These types struggle with all of the random possibilities that could disrupt their established way of doing things. So their instinct is to protect their routines from chaotic unpredictability. So this has the unfortunate effect of leading them to reject healthy imagination and curiosity that could make them feel unsafe considering new ways of doing things not not what they want to be doing so the way to improve this situation is to leave openings in your routine to allow yourself some time to ponder in e style questions so these questions can include what if this happens what are a few things that could happen as a result or if this is the worst case scenario what are several other possibilities that could also be considered so by doing this leaving yourself a little space to do some 
NE, knowing that you can safely return to the routine. If you get too far out in the crazy abstract world, you can let go of the anxiety of not knowing what could happen because you're starting to expand the roadmap yourself. With all the IJs, I think one of the biggest issues is, well, actually really with all the types, I think they're worried about losing control. Like the inferior function feels out of their control. And so that's part of the scary thing. So I think what, what we're finding here is that what you gotta do for every type is take control, assert control over that inferior function to lessen the anxiety surrounding it. Okay, now we're talking about the INFJs and INTJs. They have introverted intuition, NI, as their dominant function and extroverted sensing as their inferior function, SE. So they overemphasize forming conclusions and concepts for their inner world and underemphasize seeking experiences that could challenge those conclusions. The NI dominants tend to struggle with accepting that they are missing or not observing detailed information because the SE is, the, is all the details because their instinct is to protect the abstract systems that they have developed that help them predict their environment. So in other words, the NI types are always setting up a bunch of systemized ways of doing things that allow them to not have to worry about the details. So an INTJ, for example, will spend like six hours figuring out a formula for an Excel spreadsheet so that they can just type in one number and fill it out automatically without having to do two hours of work putting in all the detailed data, overemphasizing the systems and getting that to work to avoid the actual nitty gritty. And so ultimately that leads them to rejecting healthy exploration of new experiences and getting into those details which could disrupt their security that they have built up with the fortress of introverted intuition. So the way to improve this situation is to deliberately seek out and gather new concrete information that could critique or even totally mess up your abstract system or conceptualization. So by developing and choosing your own exploration, choose your own adventure, you can let go of the anxiety of not feeling like you can handle stuff in reality because you will have more experience handling it. Ultimately, these types need to learn to occasionally go out there without a plan and be spontaneous and seek out new information beyond the what their understanding of the world already is. I think these types like to think they're open-minded, especially the INFJs, but they really actually find a way to take even new things that they learn and turn it back into their old way of understanding things. Because the chaos of SE, of the details, details of reality frightens them. Okay, next up we'll talk about the IPs, the introverted perceivers. They will always have trouble connecting with others if it could risk the integrity of their own inner standards. All right, so the ISFPs, INFPs, they have introverted feeling, FI as their dominant function, extroverted thinking, TE as their inferior function. So they over, over <laughs> Overemphasize, it always trips me up. They overemphasize assessing and building their values for their inner world and underemphasize exploring the problems of others. So the FI dominance will struggle with accepting that they need to be able to work with others because their instinct is to insist that if they care about something enough, if they feel strongly, if their heart is really in it, that will carry them through. Even if no one else will work with them and they're on their own, they're like, whatever, I don't need anyone else. So this leads to them rejecting help from others if it might threaten their independence. Like all the IPs really <laughs> bristle and they will interpret almost any situation as you're trying to take away my independence man i'm gonna i gotta reject whatever you're trying to tell me so to improve this situation these types have to connect with others who care and value about the same things so by doing that they can develop and build intellectual connections with those people who share those values and you can let go of not knowing if others will support you in your dreams and instead get to work with that community. You connect with people on the FI level. It's like we all care about the same stuff. We care about, I don't know, the environment, for example. Now that we have this community, let's all work together, TE, to like get things done. What can we do together? Let me sacrifice a bit of my individual ideas, my individual FI to give a bit more to just like how do we get a result with other people. 
ISTPs and INTPs have introverted thinking TI as their dominant function and extroverted feeling FE as their inferior. So they overemphasize puzzling and solving problems for themselves. Like what problems do I have? Let me, let me just figure this out on my own. And they underemphasize seeking the values of others. So it's like, I don't care what you all feel. <laughs> I don't care what's important to everyone else. I'm just gonna work on this problem that interests me. So they struggle with accepting that they need to be able to connect on that emotional level with others because their instinct is to insist that, hey, if what I'm doing makes sense to me, then that should be enough for everyone else to get on board. Like, I'm the smart one here. You dummies should be able to see that. I don't care if you don't like it. Just get on board. So that leads them to reject those healthy emotional connections from others if it might threaten their way of doing things. The TI people are like, these people, these dummies, <laughs> if I you know, go on the emotional level with them, they're just gonna gum up the works, they're gonna get in my way. You know, I have a pathway I'm trying to go down. I can't let people drag me down and hold me back with, you know, oh, I don't, I don't actually care about that. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that idea. It's like, no, you, <laughs> no. The way to improve this situation is to connect with others who are curious and deep thinking with the same stuff that you are interested in. So by developing and building emotional connections with people who share your ideas, you can kind of let go of that anxiety of not knowing if others will support you in your ideas and instead embrace the value of having your own community. Which type is the most emotional of the 16 personalities? Well, you can watch that video right here for the answer to that question which I just posed. <laughs> Until next time, stay cool and attractive.